Welcome to Unite Now, where we bring unity to you, wherever you are. Welcome to today's session. We are going to be getting up to speed with HDRP, which is the High Definition Render Pipeline. Uh, again, this is going to be an introduction to the High Definition Render Pipeline, so keep that in mind as we are moving through. Um, thank you for taking a moment to let us know uh, where you are tuning in from. Really awesome to see folks from all around the globe. Uh, there is just uh, a world of Unity users, and it, it's fun to see everyone in the same place. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So there are a team of us uh, making this session happen. Uh, so the voice that you're hearing now is, is me. I'm Andy. I'm in the top left there. Uh, but I'm also joined today uh, by a team of folks that will be helping uh, man the session and make sure that all your questions get answered. So we have James, we have Ethan, we have Dave. We have Thomas and we have Mayor. So these um, are the people that will be helping um, get all of your questions answered and make sure that the session moves along smoothly. So quick outline uh, for today's session. Uh, we are going to do uh, a quick overview um, what HDRP is, why we would use it. We're going to spend the majority of today's session uh, diving into the project, into the Unity Editor, and getting our hands dirty working around with HDRP and setting that up. Uh, there will be a few opportunities to explore some content, and then we'll do a quick wrap-up at the end. Um, I do want to call your attention to these three icons over here on the right side of the screen. We have the watch, the do, the explore. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to watch, uh, and that's going to be watching uh, me do a demo uh, when those things come up. Um, so again, when you see that stop sign, I'll call these out as we, as we go. Um, but uh, watch. Um, and then when you get the green thumbs up, that means you have the green light, you're good to go. You'll dive into Unity and, and start plucking around yourself. Uh, and then we have the Explore, which is going to be an opportunity to, you know, take a step further, dive deeper, um, kind of explore some different parameters. At any time during today's session, you can ask questions and we encourage you to ask questions. So we have uh, the ideal Zoom layout. Zoom is the application that we are using right now. Uh, so we encourage you to set this up so that uh, you have the chat open in the top right. Uh, we will be dropping um, handy links in that chat. Um, so I encourage you to have that open there. Uh, this tends to be a nice Zoom layout. Um, one note, if you have a question, um, so a topic related question or a question relating to the project or anything along those lines, we're gonna encourage you to use the Q&A tab, right? So you can, uh, in the Zoom, meeting, you can open the Q&A and ask questions there. Um, if you have a general comment or anything else, uh, reserve that for the chat. Um, and then uh, we may have some poll questions. I'll let you know if those are coming out. You can keep an eye out for those. So again, if this is your first time here, uh, welcome. Uh, the goal of these sessions is to uh, get our hands on these Unity projects and dive into these new topics. So in this case, we're talking about the High Definition Render Pipeline. We are going to encourage you to follow along uh, and work through the challenges. Um, and again, take the opportunity to ask questions and get those answered here in the session. Um, note these sessions are recorded and there are quite a few uh, sessions that have already been recorded. And so you, there is a library of those on the Unity Learn site. So feel free to check those out and kind of review some of the previous sessions if you've missed some of those. Um, and note that if you see something here you'd like to see again, uh, it will be recorded so you'll be able to follow up on the Unity Learn site. Um, and then just a last reminder that if you have a question, drop it in the Q&A tab. That just allows us to track those and make sure we get all the questions answered during today's session. So we are here to talk about HDRP, the High Definition Render Pipeline. Today's session goals are to convert an existing project to use the High Definition Render Pipeline, learn how to set up some of the core aspects of the High Definition Render Pipeline. So that's going to include the HDRP volume. Uh, and then there are a few features that are slightly different than the default render pipeline. So we've got so a few different um, lighting changes uh, and we have material changes. Post-processing is going to be slightly different as well. So we do want to take a moment to explore those and make sure that you have uh, all, the, all the tools and information that you need to work with HDRP in your projects. So the first thing we want to do 
uh, is we want to make sure that everyone can follow along. So let's take a few minutes here, make sure that everyone can set up the Unity project on their own machine. So the first step is you're going to follow this link, which we've dropped in the chat, and we will uh, drop it again in the chat. Uh, so it is uh, the bottom of the chat there. Um, but go ahead and follow this link and download the project materials for today's session. Um, James, just drop that in the chat. Thank you, James. Um, feel free to follow that and download uh, these assets. Uh, once you've downloaded those assets, uh, let us know in the chat when you are good to go and we'll move on to the next step. Again, as you are going through this, if you have questions, uh, feel free to drop those in the Q&A tab and we will be able to address those there. Right, great, getting the green light, thumbs up from quite a few folks here. So we'll just spend another few seconds. Looks like we are good to move on. So. Again, if you have a question here or maybe you, you missed the link, feel free to drop a, a question in the Q&A tab and we can help you there. Once you have the asset package downloaded, the next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and create a new Unity project. We are going to be using Unity 2019.3, so you should be using Unity 2019.3. Go ahead and create a new project. You can just select the default 3D template. Um, we are going to be converting a project, and the existing project is just the standard default pipeline, so feel free to select that 3D template and go ahead and create that project. Uh, the last step, you may have guessed it, is now that you have the project and you have the assets downloaded, go ahead and import those assets uh, into your project uh, and import all of that package. So a few notes. Uh, any 2019.3 version is, is fine. Um, so as long as it's 2019.3, the uh, additional sub-versions, um, it doesn't matter for, for this lesson. Once you have those assets imported, let us know in the chat and we will continue on. Um, if you, um, you know, ha had a misstep at any point along these three steps, feel free to drop that in the Q&A and we can help you there. So, Today, we are talking about the High Definition Render Pipeline, or HDRP for short. So the High Definition Render Pipeline is really focused on maximizing fidelity in Unity experiences. So I've included a few videos here. There are uh, quite a few Unite Talks on some of the details and diving deeper into the High Definition Render Pipeline. So if you are curious about some of that, you know, reaching back and looking under the hood exactly what's happening, I would encourage you to check those out. Um, again, today's session is, is going to be getting up to speed, so an introduction. Uh, the video in the middle here is the, the heretic. Um, so you may have seen uh, this demo video from Unity. Uh, Unity has released a few videos kind of detailing um, some of the techniques uh, that are used uh, in that project and how they relate to the High Definition Render Pipeline. Also worth noting here that the High Definition Render Pipeline uh, is focused on maximum fidelity, uh, but it's not it should not be used for all platforms, right? This is going to be best for um, PCs and consoles, right? Powerful, high-end platforms. This is going to be, again, the highest fidelity, so it's going to use the most uh, compute power. I see a question here um, about VR. It can be used for VR. Um, again, uh, you would want to reserve this for um, desktop-based VR. Right? So mobile VR, it, it might be a bit of a stretch, um, but desktop-based VR um, certainly can use HDRP. So there's another question here about the links for the videos. Um, yeah, we'll get those dropped in the chat here. Um, once we get to the first challenge, I can, I can pull those in. Um, but in the meantime, uh, I do want to take a moment here to level set with what a render pipeline is. As uh, running these sessions, get a lot of questions about, you know, what is a render pipeline? Never heard of a render pipeline. Um, you know, what is this thing? It's kind of abstract. Um, so I want to take a moment here to demystify that. If you joined us in the Universal Render Pipeline session, this is going to be um, very familiar, but it's worth uh, level setting here. So um, Render Pipeline. It's not a bunch of GPUs and pipelines, but it's actually just the process in which Unity takes to render uh, your scene. The Render Pipeline is really responsible for three things. It's responsible for culling, 
rendering the objects, and post-processing. So culling is just determining which objects should be drawn, right? And this is going to be based on where the camera is in your scene, what objects are occluded. Uh, this image right here is a callback to the optimization learn live. So feel free uh, to check that one out, the recording of that on the Learn Live site. Uh, but again, culling is determining what objects should be rendered. The next step in the render pipeline is kind of the biggest step, right? This is the, the majority of what the render pipeline does, and this is actually rendering the objects. So taking those objects from your scene, doing all the lighting, all of the mesh computing, uh, the shaders, the shadows, the reflections, all that good stuff that makes your scene look like a scene. Right. So that is, again, the main uh, piece of the render pipeline. And as you can see, this is the project that we'll be working in today. The last step is post-processing. Right? So once you have that scene rendered, you can apply uh, image effects uh, to the top of it to customize the look and feel. Uh, this uh, set of images uh, is a callback to our Learn Live on post-processing and color grading. So as you can see, the image on the left has no post-processing. The one in the middle has boosted the saturation. Um, and the one on the right has this cool Sin City effect. Uh, again, this is another Learn Live that you can access on the Learn site, so feel free to uh, check that out. So right now, uh, I did this in the Universal Render Pipeline session as well, uh, but I do want to take a moment just to show you that you can actually see the Render Pipeline in action. Okay. So notice the stop sign in the top right, so I'm just going to encourage you to watch as I do a quick demo here. Again, you'll have an opportunity to uh, dive in and explore this uh, in the first challenge. Uh, but right now, I'm going to share my screen into Unity. Okay, so here I am in the Unity project. Uh, this is the project that we'll be working in today. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and open up the starter scene. There we are. So this is the Spotlight uh, Tunnel project that you may have seen uh, before. This has been used in Unity for a couple years now. Uh, but what I wanted to show you right away is that the render pipeline shouldn't be this mystery, right? Let's demystify that. So one of the things you can do is you can, in Unity, you can open up uh, a tool called the frame debugger. And you just use the window, drop down to analysis, and open up the frame debugger. And it brings up this window, which I'm just going to go ahead and dock down here. What the frame debugger does is it literally allows you to go frame by frame as this thing is being rendered. And we can see what the render pipeline is doing. So if I just enable it, I'm just going to collapse these so we can get a high level idea of what's going on. So there's a few steps. You can dive really deep into this. Um, but again, at a high level, you can just step through and see what's happening when. Right? So we can see the drawings happening in this section, all the opaque objects. You could even step down and see how those objects are being rendered in what order. Um, so this is what the render pipeline is doing. Um, note, we're still using the default render pipeline here. You can do the same thing once we have HDRP set up in the project. Um, but I did just want to call this out. So if you would like to uh, dive a little bit deeper, you can check that out. Uh, but again, the render pipeline shouldn't be this mysterious thing. You can actually open this up and see exactly what's happening and when it is happening. Again, I see some questions uh, coming in, which are all great. Um, the frame debugger, again, you can find that using the window, drop down at the top, and then going to analysis. And it's one of the tools there. So a couple more slides, and then we're going to jump into the first challenge with HDRP. Uh, but we have some understanding of what HDRP is now, uh, but really want to drive home why we would use HDRP. So HDRP really is the highest fidelity render pipeline in Unity. So if your goal is to create the most uh, photorealistic experience, uh, consider using HDRP. Again, it's designed for use on more powerful hardware, so PCs and consoles mainly. Um, and the benefit of HDRP is it has uh, more realistic lighting workflows and uh, additional material workflows as well. Um, worth noting that it is built on top of the scriptable render pipeline. This means that when you want to take it a step further and you want to customize the render pipeline, uh, it is much easier to access that. You can even access it using C Sharp. 
Um, so that is uh, a great benefit of using uh, the high definition render pipeline. So also get a lot of questions around the differences between the pipelines. Um, so wanted to cover this and then we will jump into the first challenge. So we have really three render pipeline options in Unity, right? So we have HDRP, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. We have the universal render pipeline or URP. Uh, we had a session on that two weeks ago. So you can feel free to check that out, check out the recording. And then we have the default render. And this is just what has been used uh, in Unity, right? This is up till 2018, this is just what we had. Um, and it worked great, but uh, as we want to kind of maximize fidelity or maximize performance, uh, you know, we have these script render pipelines which help us with that. So the priority again with HDRP is it's the highest fidelity possible. The universal render pipeline is gonna be the most performant, right? Maximum performance. Um, and the default is gonna be uh, kind of the one size fits all, right? So that obviously becomes limiting when you wanna get to either spectrum of that one size fits all. So that's why these script render pipelines have come about. Again, these ones are relatively new. So they were introduced in Unity 2018. The default render has been around pretty much as long as Unity has been around. And it will um, continue to be around for uh, the next few versions as well. Um, these two, the HDRP and URP are script render pipelines, which just means that it's easy to access um, the backend and extend those. Um, again, HDRP should really be focused to uh, PCs and consoles. And if you would like to develop for uh, other platforms, mobile, AR, um, all VR platforms, um, you know, URP is gonna be the best option. Um, again, you can use VR with HDRP, but reserve it for the PC-based uh, headsets. A few questions coming in. Really appreciate the questions. The one that always comes up is, can you use HDRP and URP in the same project? It's really not recommended uh, because you would need to duplicate all of the materials, and it's just going to require a lot more work um, to use both. Um, so generally, it's a decision you want to make um, based on the priorities of your project. So really not recommended to use both. Um, it's technically possible, but you're just gonna end up requiring a lot of work and we'll show you why when we jump into the first uh, demo. Okay, so I've been talking at you uh, for a few minutes now. Uh, I would like to jump in and do a quick demo so that we can get you into Unity and setting up HDRP uh, in your project. I'm going to jump back to Unity here, share my screen over. I'm going to close the frame debugger. So we don't need that right now. Clear this out. So here we are in the project. Again, this is the tunnel scene, and you may have seen this before. Uh, right now, it's using the default render. We are going to convert this to use the high definition render pipeline. So, how do we get started with the high definition render pipeline? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to pull it in um, from the package manager. So if you go to window, package manager, again, I encourage you just to watch as I go through this demo and then we'll have a few minutes for you to give it a shot uh, and ask questions. So in the package manager, you can find the high definition render pipeline. Um, just go ahead and do a search for it. If you don't see it right away, you can select it and then there'll be an option to install. I already have mine installed right here. Um, but you just go ahead and click install. That will bring everything into the project that you will need. Note that when HDRP is brought into the project, nothing changes right away, right? We just brought those assets in, right? That package is in the project now, but we haven't set it up. So how do we set up HDRP to be used in our project? Well, it's pretty straightforward. What we need to do is we need to uh, let's let's look at this way. So if you look at the project settings, so edit project settings, and I'm just going to I'll just dock those here for a second. And you look at graphics and the project settings. There is an option here to add a render pipeline asset. So in order to set up HDRP, what we need to do is we need to add a high definition render pipeline asset to this field right here. So in order to do that, we need to create one. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it settings. And in settings, I'm going to create 
rendering high definition render pipeline asset. Okay. And I will just call it the HD render pipeline asset for now. So this is the asset that holds all of our high definition render pipeline settings. Right? And as you can see right here, we can start to dive in and configure a lot of different features. Uh, but right away, we just want to get this set up. So I'm going to move this window over here so we can see our scene and our project settings at the same time. And all we need to do now that we've created that is just drag it in and hold on, folks. You're going to get the pink screen. Now, this may be alarming at first, but it's really not too bad. What's happened is that we've converted now to use the high definition render pipeline. What's happened in the scene is that it's still using the default render materials. So what we need to do is we need to convert the materials uh, to be high definition render pipeline supported materials. So how do you do that? Well, um, just to really make sure that this makes sense, I can go in and I can choose uh, maybe a couple pieces here. So you can see everything's just pink. But if I select one of these objects here, and I'm just going to go to the inspector, what I can do to change this from being pink to actually working in HDRP is I can go down to the material, which is the large tunnel material. You can see it's pink here because it's still using the standard shader. What we need to do is we need to convert this over to an HDRP shader. So this is really straightforward. You can drop this down, select HDRP, choose Lit, which is going to be the equivalent of the standard in HDRP. And it'll take a second to think. And once it has thought about it for a second, it will convert that over. And you can see that these materials are going to start to work um, in, the, in the scene here. So, doesn't look great right away. We need to convert the rest of the materials. Um, good news is, is that we don't need to do this all manually. Right? We could go in and change these all manually, but there's actually a tool that will convert all the materials for us. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So you go to Edit, go down to Render Pipeline. There is an option here to upgrade project materials to high-definition materials. So if I select that, and hit proceed, it will go through and automatically convert all the materials in the project to use HDRP materials. So we will just let it do its thing for a second. Shouldn't take too long. And then once it is done, uh, we will have no more pink shaders. Everything will be converted to use HDRP shaders. And we should be able to have a scene that is working in HDRP. So it is really uh, that simple, right? Add an HDRP asset, convert the materials, and good to go. The option to convert all the materials uh, was found under Edit, uh, Render Pipeline, and then Convert or Upgrade Project Materials to High Definition Materials. There we go. So the scene has now been converted. We are going to worry about some of these lighting characteristics here in the next challenge, but for now, I'd like I'll turn it over to you so you can import HDRP into your project, uh, add the asset to the project settings, and convert the materials. So with that in mind, I'm going to share back uh, to the deck, and we will turn it over to you uh, for the first challenge. So we have a few questions. Um, which high definition render pipeline version am I using? So it is just the, I believe it's the most recent one, the most recent version in 2019.3. The version that I'm using is 7.1.8. Um, question here about, you know, what type of PC you would need or should you have, a, a, you know, a super powered PC to work with HDRP? Well, not necessarily. You know, it's generally always going to be uh, faster if you have a more powerful PC, but um, you should be able to use HDRP with, um, you know, the majority of machines out there. Again, it'll be one of those things that you'll want to adjust and adjust the settings and make sure that, you know, you're, you're optimizing it for whatever your target platform is. Um, but you should be able to use it with uh, any, 
any machine that can run Unity. Um, a question about HDRP and Oculus. HDRP does work in VR, but you should really reserve HDRP for the tethered headsets. I would not recommend it for the Quest. Like mobile hardware is going to, you know, it's going to struggle to run HDRP in most circumstances. Um, so if you were deploying to the Oculus Quest or Oculus Go, I would encourage you to use the universal render pipeline. If you are, you know, using one of the tethered Oculus headsets, um, so a Rift or Rift S, um, you know, definitely can use HDRP. The next demo and the next challenge are going to be setting up the volume in HDRP. So we simply just added the HDRP asset to the project, and now we know that it's using HDRP, but now we want to start to make things actually look good and work properly, right? So the first step there is going to be adding an HDRP volume. With that said, uh, I'm going to jump back in and do a quick demo. Notice the stop sign in the top right, so again, I'm gonna encourage you to watch as I do the demo, and then the next challenge will have some time to, uh, for you guys to dive in and try it on your own. So back in the project, and just to recap where we are, we've simply added the high definition render pipeline asset to the project settings. And now we are ready to make this actually start to look good. So let's jump into this. And I'm just going to zoom in to this area over here. Trim the project. Okay, and you can see right away that some of the lighting. Uh, seems to be a little strange, right? So let's go ahead and fix that first. Um, so one tool is really handy and you should always just use right away. Uh, if you go ahead and go to the window render pipeline and open up the HD render pipeline wizard, this will give you a list of things that should be fixed when you are switching to the high definition pipeline. So if you just go ahead and hit fix all, it will kind of do all the work. Feel free to like look through these if you want to dive a little bit deeper. Um, but just as a quick, quick gut check to make sure that your project is set up properly, you can use this high definition render pipeline wizard. Again, I found that using the window um, drop down to render pipeline and it was one of the options there. And once this is set up, we will know that we are in um, the correct spot to start configuring um, the high dimension render pipeline project. Um, coming in about why does it look like there's crazy bloom? Um, this is because the lighting is still converting over to the HDRP lights. So I'll show you that in just a second. Um, when I did the HD render pipeline wizard, it's going to ask if I want to create or load a default scene. This will just be the scene that's used if you want to create a new scene. Um, I can just create one. It doesn't matter right now because we're just using a scene that's already been created. Um, but then, once you have that done, you'll see you have straight green check marks. Green light is good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Uh, we can see things have gotten a little better here through that process. Um, but the other thing we're going to want to do is drop down to the directional light, which is responsible for the lighting here. And if I select this, you can see that all of a sudden, things have kind of recalculated, right? This light has now been adjusted uh, to use HDRP. So simply selecting this and then seeing it in the inspector um, triggers Unity to do a quick uh, reset on that light and now things start to look um, a bit more normal. So you can go through and you can select the lights, uh, make sure that they all are, just have a quick reset on them so that they work in HDRP. And then you should see a scene that starts to look a little bit more like this. What we need to do now is we need to set up our global volume. So why would we need to set up the global volume? Well, one of the main differences with HDRP right off the bat is that you cannot just set up a skybox in the traditional way. So normally you would set up skybox by going to window, rendering, lighting settings, and there would be an option here to change the skybox. That option is changed in HDRP. Uh, so I want to show you how to set up that skybox um, and how you can also use that same component to add um, 
you know, fog and different visual effects to your scene. So to get started, all you need to do is go down to the plus icon here, right click and press create. Um, go down to volume. You have a few different options, uh, but for starters, you just want to use the global volume. So this will create a global volume object in your scene. And if you see in the inspector, this is the volume component. Uh, the idea behind this is that we can set up different parameters for different areas or different volumes in our scene. Right now, this is just a global one, and it's set to global, so it'll apply to the entire scene. You could set these up to be local and have different areas with different volume settings. And we'll see that in one of the Explore options later. But for now, we'll just set it up for the entire scene, so globally. What we need to do is we need to create a new profile. So go ahead and click New. And it's gone ahead and created a global volume profile for us. And to make this uh, start to look nice in the scene, what we need to do is we need to add an override. So you can start to get an idea of all the things you can do with the volume here. Right? So we, again, we can affect fog. We can affect our different lighting settings. Uh, we can do material properties. We can adjust post-processing. There's ray tracing. So if you have an RTX graphics card, you could start to explore that. Shadowing, sky. Um, the first thing we need to do if we want to set up a skybox is we need a visual environment. So create that one. This just determines which sky will be used. Um, so we can turn this on and select from the drop down which one we want to use. We'll just use a gradient sky for now. Um, note nothing has changed in the scene yet uh, because we still need to add this gradient sky override. So we can go ahead and add an override, select sky. Use the gradient sky. There's a few other options as well. I encourage you to explore. Uh, but for now, choose the gradient sky. And I can then control um, you know, what color the gradient sky is and whether or not it's used in the project. So at this point, you should see that we have a sky box in the scene. All right. So that is starting to look um, pretty decent. The other really neat thing and the crowd favorite with high definition render pipeline is the ability to add fog and really nice high quality fog in the scene. So I have this gradient sky. Could continue to mess with this, change the colors, change the exposure, things like that. I'm just gonna collapse it for a second. And the other, uh, the other volume element that I want to add right away is fog. Uh, because again, it looks um, really great in scenes, really enhances some of the lighting and stuff that we'll do in the next step. Um, so you can enable fog um, here. You can see right away that there is an effect. Um, again, you can change the distance. So if you decrease this distance, it's going to increase the density of the fog. So I encourage you to kind of explore this. Um, and again, this will start to look really great when we configure the lights. Uh, they'll have those nice light trails, um, which add to some of the realism in the scene. Um, again, some additional parameters. If you enable volumetric fog, it's going to look even better. And you can start to uh, configure some of the more um, details here with that fog. So we'll be able to see the fog a little bit more once we add a light in the next step. Um, but for now, what I want to do, and the goal here, is to set up that skybox and to add that fog. And so when we go into the next step, we can configure our lights and start to make this scene look really awesome. So with that said, let's jump back over to a challenge so that you guys can go ahead and set up this global volume and get a skybox in your scene. And then also you can start to check out some of the, the lights and make sure you can get your directional light looking like this and make your scene look less blown out by the light. What I'd like you to do now, we'll just take a couple minutes in this one and then we'll jump into the last challenge. Uh, but go ahead and create a new global volume. Go ahead and configure a skybox and configure a volumetric uh, fog. Go ahead and give this a shot and then let us know in the chat when you have that set up. Uh, we'll spend a couple minutes and then we'll move on to the last challenge, which really starts to bring everything together. We'll work, worry with the lighting or work with the lighting 
work with the materials and make everything sort of look really nice. Yeah, so great question. What was the step to reduce the bloom effect? Um, so the bloom effect is just when the light is still um, set up for the, the default renderer. So one quick trick to change that is just to select the light in the scene and then look in the inspector. And by the process of opening the inspector for a light, uh, it will reset itself to work with HDRP. Um, alternatively, you could delete the light and then create a new HDRP light, um, but I find that just simply selecting the light is enough to trigger Unity to reset it. A couple good questions here. So you may be noticing kind of a blue um, pattern on your uh, scene when you set up the, the volume to use the skybox. Uh, I'll show you how to uh, fix that and why that is the case uh, here in the next challenge. Um, and then we have another question here about the difference between global volumes and local volumes and how you can use those together. We'll dive deeper into this in the next HDRP session, which will be the 201 session, which is diving deeper in HDRP. Um, but the idea behind the volumes is, you, again, you can have that global volume for the entire scene, and then you can have local volumes that are designated to certain areas in your scene. Um, and you can set those up so that the local volume will override what's, what, what the global volume has set. So an example in this scene where you could use that is you could have the global volume with the skybox and some overall fog. You could set a local volume to be inside the tram car. And you could set up a unique set of post-processing effects or volume effects that's only inside the tram car. Another question here, how do you add the visual environment? So you'll want to make sure to create a new volume. So it's going to be create volume, global volume. And then in the inspector, there will be an option to create a new volume profile. And once you have that set, then you can create the visual environment. You can create your additional skyboxes. You can create your fog from there. Uh, so if you are only seeing um, the ability to create a volume profile. You may want to make sure that you are selecting create in the hierarchy rather than in the assets window. So in that, if you're using the default scene view in that left bar, you'll want to create the volume there. Um, and then you'll have the option to create the different types. Um, and then again, choose global volume. Okay, these are great questions. Uh, we are going to continue to answer those. Um, but want to make sure that we have a few minutes to get to the last challenge here. So as those questions are coming in, let's take this a step further and round it out for today's session. Uh, so I'm going to uh, jump into the next demo. I would encourage you to watch, uh, and then we will have the last few minutes to kind of set up the lighting and, and set up materials uh, and take this a step further. Uh, and at that point, you should have all the tools necessary to really take this scene all the way. So with that said, go ahead and jump to the last demo here. Share my screen into Unity. So here we are. We can see that the scene is still kind of dark. Right? We want to make this actually start to look like, you know, something, look like a scene, look kind of nice. So what we could do is we can start to add um, additional lights to the scene. So I'm just going to add one, and then you guys can take it from there, and carry on and add more lights. Um, but there are quite a few good areas to add lights in this scene. Um, there, I can just create a simple point light in this room so you can start to see a little bit more. So if I just create point light, We'll create one there. Beautiful. And so you can start to see how this is really rounding out the scene, and you're actually starting to see something. It's not just dark anymore. Um, but something else that's worth noting here is there are these spotlights in the top ceiling. So I'd encourage you to add lights there to emphasize those lighting details. Um, but let's look at one area, which is quite cool. A uh, great place to add a light is going to be on the tram headlight. So 
we can see that the tram has this little headlight here. Um, and I would actually like to create a spotlight coming off of that uh, to create some realistic lighting. So if I go into the tram pivot, uh, I can go down to the front lamp. I think this is the object, looks like it is. I can just right click and create a spotlight. So again, creating a light is gonna be similar to how it was in the default render. And with that light created, you can see that it is going to start projecting light into the scene. One of the really neat things about lighting in HDRP that is unique to HDRP is the fact that it is physically based. So what does that mean? If I open up some of these parameters here, you notice there are a few additional things, like we can adjust the outer angle and the inner angle and the radius, right, things like that. Um, but one of the really fantastic features of HDRP is the ability to use real lighting units or physically based lighting units. So as you can see here, this intensity is now uh, in a unit called lumens. There are a few different units here you can use. And the benefit of this is that this is a real lighting unit, right? So if you were to measure light in the real world, these are units that you would use to measure that light. So why does this matter? Why should you care? Well, what's really cool is you can actually look up typical light values for different scenarios, right? So in this case, this is a train headlight. This would be pretty bright in the real world. So what I did is I went ahead and I Googled how bright is a train headlight. And one of the top Google searches says that a typical train light has 200,000 candelas. So what you could do is you can literally come in and say, okay, I know now that in order for this light to be physically accurate with the real world, I would need to make this 200,000 candelas. And so you can just add that in. And all of a sudden, you can see that this is how bright a real train light would be. So there's no more guessing and just making it look nice. You can certainly have the artistic touch, but if you just want it to be physically accurate, you can just look these values up and plug them in, which is really, really awesome. So this is kind of an old, older train, so maybe it's not the full 200,000, maybe it's a modern train light, but the idea is, is there, right? You can look these values up and then plug them into your scene and start to make things look really awesome. So, that is kind of the main thing that I want to touch on with the lighting here in the scene. What you can do again is you can apply a light to that tram headlight. I would encourage you to apply lights on these objects as well, casting down into the, the scene to make that look really great. But I do want to take the last few minutes and make sure that you guys can dive in and continue to ask some questions and we'll get those answered. So this is an opportunity to explore. In the last few minutes here, I would encourage you to check out the spotlight option on the front of the train. Again, you can add some spotlights to the ceiling lights. Um, and if you get to it, there are some additional lights. You can add tube lights um, to the scene as well. There's a few areas where that could look really nice. Um, materials are relatively the same as they were in the standard render pipeline. You just have a few more options, right? So you can make this look uh, really cool with some of the refractive properties. So I'd encourage you to explore some of those. And then with the volume uh, that we set up, you can add to it or you can create another volume and add some post-processing effects. But it will be the same uh, process that we did originally. So let's take the last few minutes of today's session. Feel free to explore these options. Continue to ask those questions because we'll be able to answer those. And then we'll do a quick wrap up here in just a couple minutes. So seeing a lot of questions about um, why the tunnel will be dark when you convert it. Um, so some of these lights need to be created, right? There were some in the project originally, um, but there was a lot of baked light in the project originally too. Um, so in order to make the scene light up again, you are gonna need to add lights. So there's not just a conversion to make the scene look really nice right off the bat. Uh, we do need to add some of those lights. So again, adding the light to the front of the train, adding the light to the ceiling area in that main tunnel um, will start to make that scene look really nice. And so um, it is normal for it to look dark. Um, encourage you to just add some lights and, and kind of fill it out nicely that way. Uh, we had a question as well about the ambient mode. So 
what would be the use case for the ambient lighting. So what you can do with the ambient mode, the ambient mode just determines what the source of ambient light is going to be. So generally this would be a skybox, right? So if you wanted to have light coming in from your skybox, that would be an, an example of ambient light. Um, what HDRP allows you to do is it allows you to control which skybox in particular would control that ambient light. Um, do you want it to be static? So do you want it to be from the baked skybox or do you want it to be real time? Um, so these are things that we'll dive into more um, in the uh, 201 session. Um, so worth mentioning here, we'll mention it as we close out, that there is a, an additional uh, HDRP session coming up. Where we are going to dive deeper into the high definition render pipeline, um, look at some of these more detailed lighting workflows and finish out this scene, make this look really, really nice. Um, again, the goal here is just to get up to speed, get that conversion done, make sure that you are able to convert the materials and start to use HDRP in your projects. Uh, I think that's a nice segue into a few closing notes here. We'll stick around for a few minutes uh, to make sure we can answer these questions. Let's go ahead and jump into the last bit of the slides here. Um, so we've covered a lot of HDRP, right? We've covered the um, asset, how to import it into your project, how to set it up, how to um, use the basic lighting workflows, how to set up the volumes and the skyboxes and the fog. So covered a lot. Um, what I would encourage you to do is join us in the Connect group. It's a great place to continue posting questions. We continue the discussion there. Um, if you continue to build out this project, uh, you can actually post this completed project on the Learn site. And that's a great place to, you know, see what other people are, are doing with the project, how they're working with HDRP, some of the techniques and, and tips that they're using as well. So I encourage you to check out that bit.ly link. Uh, and with that said, um, again, here's the bit.ly link for the Learn Live Connect group. Uh, we really encourage you to join us there and continue on the conversation. It's a great place to get questions. Um, if you would like to connect, I would love to stay in touch with folks, um, so feel free to find me at uh, bit.ly slash andyxr. That would be a, a LinkedIn connect there. Um, and otherwise, um, I will stick around for a few minutes to help answer any remaining questions. Um, and we encourage you to join us uh, two weeks from today in our HDRP 201 session, where we're going to dive deeper into HDRP uh, and work um, you know, essentially more. We're going to take it a step further. So I encourage you to join us then. And if not, we will um, see you when we see you. Enjoy the rest of your day or evening.